You'll notice a, a change at the point in the semester where the theories we've been covering up to this point have been focused on interpersonal communication, which is communications and relationships between one or two, between two or three people. What we're going to do now is we're going to cover two or three theories that are about group communication, kind of expanding it, and then we're going to keep kind of getting bigger as well. We're going to start talking about public communication and media, and that's kind of the way that we're headed here. Um, and this is the first one of, of these uh, these shifts, which we're going to be talking about functional perspective on group decision making today. This is a pretty um, a pretty easy theory, I think. It's not all that difficult. Um, and this is the first theory that we're going to talk about in here that moves from being necessarily descriptive to prescriptive. The difference there is, you know, we're not only saying this is the way that communication happens, but we're saying this is the way that communication should happen if it's going to be effective. So just in general, I want you to think about whether or not you think groups generally lead to better or worse decisions, right? What are some of our assumptions that we have about group work? So when you get stuck in group work, right, as a teacher, I put people in group work all the time, and I always hear the groans. I always hear the moans from students saying, oh, we don't want to work with other people, right? Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, right? Group work's often frustrating. The coordination is annoying. When you get a bunch of people together to make decisions, it can be really, really difficult. Um, and groups, while they often come to make better decisions, it's not always a smooth process. It's often quite rocky along the way. Um, and uh, here, Cower and Gowron have given us a, a set of guidelines to how we might say, if you're in a group, how might we make better decisions? How might we streamline that process so that we can better, um, better communicate in these settings? And when we talk about better communication here, what we're meaning within, within functional group perspective here is that both efficient communication, right, we're supposed to be communicating faster, right, with less slippage, etc., and we're also supposed to be a better end game, right? You're supposed to have a better decision at the end of it. Now, functional perspective, FPGD, on group decision making, argues that groups make good decisions if they follow four functions. This is a theory that has used uh, a lot of experiments to try to validate its findings. And experiments demonstrate that if four functions are met, groups are better likely to make a decision, a good decision. The first one is what we're going to call an analysis of the problem, where a group must take a realistic look at current conditions. This is one step that is often overlooked. Um, where uh, people often just jump in without, right? first of all, a group meets for a problem, right? There's something that needs to be done. And problem can be kind of broad there. It can mean um, a bunch of different things. But something needs to be accomplished. And the thing that you're trying to accomplish <coughs> is supposed to um, overcome something, right? Um, or your task. And so what a group must do is take a realistic look at the current conditions as they exist to know what it is that you need to accomplish. Um, a faulty analysis is a failure to recognize a potential threat. If you don't look at what's supposed to happen, right, or at what it is that you're trying to overcome here, you're likely going to, um, to fail to, to see something that you should see. Things that we look for when we're, where we're looking for uh, analyzing the problem is we have to determine the nature, the extent, and the causes of the problem as well. Um, so what you should have is an agreement by everyone about what it is that you're supposed to be fixing before you actually move forward. Function two is goal setting. Goal setting is establishing criteria for a proposed solution. So once you know what it is that you're trying to tackle, you should be able to say, okay, here's how it is that we are going to determine whether or not solutions are viable. So once you set forth a problem, right, you know something that needs to be fixed, you should be able to say, okay, any suggestions that we have that come across our desk, we want to make sure that it does A, B, and C, for example. Now, why is this important? Because if you don't establish this criteria, right? Decisions are likely to be driven by politics rather than reason. People's emotions get in the way. If everyone up front says, this is what we want out of a solution, before the ideas start rolling in, then right, you, you, um, you have a way to be able to kind of do it in a freer environment, to establish and evaluate what you want before you actually have a chance to even see the decisions. Our next function is the identification of alternatives which these are, what are ways that we could go with our decision? This is where you start looking at what your possible solutions are, right? Um, and 
so like we're not evaluating on that. We're just saying here's a list of the possible solutions by which we might go with. What aren't we thinking about, right? What are and this is you might think about like a brainstorming session, right? Just shout out ideas, suggestions, whatever kind of solutions might exist. That's where we're going to we're going to open up. And then we have an evaluation of positive and negative characteristics. There's two kind of ways here, right? What we're evaluating are, are evaluating here is the solutions against the criteria that we've set up in function number two. So first, right, you can have a positive bias. You can give more weight to the favorable characteristics. You can say, which are the choices that most link up to our, um, to our criteria that we've set up, right? Which are the ones that are the most fit into that category? Or we can have a negative bias, which we can say, which are the solutions that are most unattractive, right? the ones that least fit into the goal setting that we had there. And we can kind of do a process of elimination and, and, and get rid of them. And it can kind of be a last, last solution standing type of solution. Now, FBGD doesn't say either of these is better. It says, you know, it's going to depend on what it is you're trying to accomplish, whether or not you have a positive or a negative bias will be more now, which of these is the most important for successful group communication? This theory argues that it's none, but it's the progression through these functions that leads to good decisions being made. It's, a, it's moving from step to step to step that actually helps good decisions be made. Now, within groups, there are three communication styles, and, how, and they relate to these different um, uh, to these different functions, right? The first is promotive communication, which that's communication that draws attention to one of the four decision-making functions. That would be someone saying, hey, we got to pause here and make sure that we evaluate our solutions, right? Or, hey, let's try to, uh, to set some goals about where we want to go as a group. There's disruptive communication, which detracts from the group's ability to achieve the four functions, right? That's any kind of communication that's going to detract from the functions, take away from it. Now, this theory argues that most group communication falls into this category, and why would that be? Well, these are hard. These functions are hard to follow, actually. Um, and so, I mean, just communication tends to take us away from those. And finally, counteractive. Counteractive refocuses the group. It's, it fights disruptive communication and says, right, when we see disruptive communication happening, it reorients the group towards the four functions. I think one of the signs of a good leader is someone who's able to engage in counteractive communication, to reorient a group and get people back on the same page and focusing on what the group needs to be doing. So, um, a few questions here, right? First of all, some uh, does it act? Some people say this theory doesn't actually take into account prior decision-making history, right? Groups have history together, um, and so two, Stoll and Holmes have proposed two different kind of new functions, right? The first is a historical, where groups talk about how past decisions were made, and institutional, where you think about who's affected by the decisions that are made within a group. Um, and are these group functions always important? Is it possible to maybe have success as a group without actually moving through these functions? Two questions that you might want to think about for, um, for the discussion board. So our critique, it's an, it's an objective theory. Does it give us a good explanation of the data? Once again, it's prescriptive instead of descriptive. So it's hard to say that it does. It does yield experimental results. The experiments do tend to demonstrate that, that groups that follow these functions will make better decisions. Help us predict future events. Very good on that, where it says, if a group follows these follows these processes, it will lead to better decisions being made. Relative simplicity. Hey, you boil down group communication to four logical steps. I don't think it gets much easier than that. Practical utility. This is probably one of the theories in here that has the highest amount of practical utility because of that prescriptive nature. It sets out to help us understand, uh, to make our lives better. And finally, a hypothesis that can be tested. It does have a clear hypothesis, right? It says follow these four steps and you will reach better decision making. So anyway, like I said, this is a pretty easy theory. Um, put this up against your, um, your own group experience and it might be a place you want to go for your journals here. So all right, good deal.